Throw champion, hurry up and duck. And dodges the strikes. That was huge right there. Pop stars the ability. One shots to single for no range up to RC. Freeze up the expo. Come on, RC. Move it, move it, move it. Baby Dragon to the side there. Expo's gonna pick back up. Go invisible, go invisible. There we go. Baby Dragon steps through. Tags out the expo. Today is the grand finals of the Itsu Cup. Chaz Mac EA coming out of the lower half of the bracket. We're able to take out Navi in the round before and Chaz Mac GS in the round before that. But out of the upper bracket, or not even like an upper bracket, not like a winner's bracket. It was all single nation all the way into the finals here. ATS Clashers will be starting off with Electric Dragons for their open attack here with a clone and five invisibility, which means I assume there's gonna be a super minion bomb coming out of this blimp as it sails all the way across the base. Maybe Super Archers? Nope, maybe it is Super Wizards inside. Super Archers as well, looks like a mix of both. He'll nuke out the Town Hall. He will get the CC pulled off to the right. And he'll claim out whatever he can in that area. Want to get the scatter shot down. Want to get these Expos out of the way. Want to do anything he can do to support his heroes to push through. But ATS Clashers in their previous round took out Alex Seed in the semifinals. And in the quarterfinals, they defeated Strunt. So now, one round left to go. This decides the entire Itsu Cup. Over on the right side, we have the King, Queen, and Royal Champion all moving together here. He has one invisibility, plenty of pet support here. Baby Dragon working on the far left side of the base and just chipping away over there with a the minion as well, trying to trim out whatever he can reach in that area without being threatened. Not a lot that he can get though. Baby Dragon will start to die out now. The Royal Champion is gonna get targeted by that Expo, which is a little bit of a problem. Stuck in the tornado trap, may need to go invisible, but I feel like he wants to save that invisibility until he gets a little bit further into the base. He has the Diggy. Diggy will get the stun of the Expo, and he will get it down here pretty quickly. Diggy's still at good HP. RC cuts through, has her ability still intact, goes invisible, skips the bomb tower, and goes straight to the multi, and gets her ability to chain through some of the Tesla's on the outside. King will keep on working. Roar Champion was able to get the highest damage threats off of her now. A good management of that Roar Champion. Good value out of her ability. And she goes the distance. Clears the way here for the Queen. Queen ability still attack. But he still has to push his way all the way up to the scatter shot. It's a long, long distance across this base. King had the Phoenix there for a bit, but the Phoenix doesn't last forever. But go down. He's going to be able to throw in the rest of what he has here into some cleanup. I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous that the queen is going to try to take the inner path here rather than go to the outside. So this wall breaker could prove to be critical to save him a few precious seconds, but wall break in behind the queen to try to get her out of this channel is going to be, oh, I wall breaks over the left side there. Does that open up the right walls? Queen circles around. That is tied that he doesn't have to spare. Hurry up, Cody. Get in there. <laughs> oh, so close. No, 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 no. Queen, take the shots, take the shots. Three, two, and one. No. 99% to open up here in this grand finals match. Brainberry will start off for Chaz Mac EA with a super bowler smash. He'll send in a flame flinger at the top of the base, holding the tension of the mortar, maintain it under control until the flame flinger can get that mortar out of the way, and then can make his way forward into the eagle. Only mortar fire being received at that Yeti right there. So the Yeti Mites will probably throw and take the other mortar out. Very, very nicely planned out right there. And also testing the area for traps as well. And the cannon will finish that Yeti off there working perfectly in sync. And now there are no threats to this Flame Flinger as it makes its approach into the Eagle Artillery and beyond. But there is a bit of a threat over here for the Roar Champion as she charges in. Tesses were popping on her, able to power through them with the rage, using that invisibility, takes down the expo, and now will begin his approach into the base there following the queen. Queen will help get some of the damage off of him. And then and once he gets topped off here, we need to see a healer transfer forward to the super bowlers. The ice golems will lead the charge. Light bigger. Not only takes that eagle artillery, but also cuts the funnel on the top side of the base. He has one jump to carry him through this base. The jump is positioned so that he goes off to the right and towards the town hall compartment. 
but he is going to round very close around this multi-inferno. So he's definitely going to need the Roar Champion to come to the bottom and go deal with that multi-inferno. But he has the king all the way on the far right side. So maybe the Roar Champion goes in over there. I'm a little bit worried about this left side multi. I really feel like the Roar Champion is going to be deployed onto it, not delayed. I needed to see her, her in now. And here she comes. Multi-inferno. Locked onto the healers here. Portability wears off. Healer's gonna start taking damage. World Champion's right there. Hurry up, Diggy, get the stun. Diggy, hurry up and get that stun. Healers are taking damage. They're taking a beating there, but they do survive. Diggy and the World Champion able to get it done. And now everybody else moves into the backside. Town Hall is gone. All the Super Bowlers are gone. Defensive Warden right there, taking strikes at the Queen. The Queen has her ability though. RC steps in, gets a stun out of the Warden, pops her ability, clears out the defenses across the bottom, but the Queen's still alive and moving. Up top, where did this Super Dragon come from? Super Dragon sweeps out of the Flame Flinger and delivers into the Inferno on the right side of the base, taking it down and removing the last line of threat on this base. So Rainberry will open up here and overcome the one, st or the, the, the one building that was left on the board there from ATS Clashers that they needed to get above them. It's a lead for Chasmac East Asia. I really like the use of that Super Dragon inside of that Flame Flinger. With the King working on the opposite side of the Buller entry. So you had the Bullers on one side, you had the King on the other side of the entry. And it made so that the Super Dragon went right into defenses and didn't get stuck on the trash on the outside of the base. So it was a really clever move right there. It ultimately gets him through, but this Flame Flinger, a little bit of damage there from the Tesla that popped up. So let's go in there and get the Mortar out of the way. Flame Flinger will get the final strike. Warden finishing his job up there, and then I assume he wants to go north. You get the Flame Flinger continue to coast in towards the defensive Queen, mainly going after the scatter shot here. As soon as that air defense is down, he's ready to round around that corner and push north. Flame Flinger. Staying safe, but the Warden is not a safe. He's got that Expo locked onto him right now. And he'll push his way through the defensive King. Rage up. Cannot get a healer transfer until this Expo gets off of the Warden. It's going to maintain the damage on him. So either going to freeze it or destroy it. Healers are transferring forward, but that means the Warden now taking damage. I don't know how we got the transfer, but that's going to force him to an early Ward ability. It's an auto ability right there. But that might be okay. Rage Tower is active. He was taking a lot of damage at the same time. Healers are going north. A lot of the bullets are walking on him. Uh-oh, Krishan is in trouble on this one. Has to cross through the entire base and reach the down hall. How many super bullets are in the middle? All the healers went north. Skeleton spells on the right side. Queen has one healer as she continues to move through the middle. But the model is gonna take her out there. She has her ability. Freeze the monolith, but I feel like that freeze is going to waste him because the queen is trying to find safety. The queen finds safety. Can she get back in action? Was it worth it? Yes, yeah, the bowlers and the outside of the base of the world champion going across the middle. Already used her ability. She's not going to last very long. Queen goes back into the middle, but she is attacking the wall outside of the range of the monolith now. Any way that he can secure the Town Hall. Guys, I don't think he can get the Town Hall. I think it's going to be a one-star. Oh, rip. Pops the invisibility for the Queen. She still has her ability. Rages her up. She'll take the model before she comes out. Okay, she's going to attack the wall now. The Queen secure the Town Hall. Can the Queen take the Town Hall? No. No, she cannot. Okay. That is the first one star of the season for ATS. That's not when they wanted it to happen. And ATS is going to desperately need not only one defense, but multiple. Roya in next. And he's going to be sending his sea goblins to go in and secure the town hall takedown. Nice and safe on that one. Exposed town hall. And he could then... Have the heroes go to the same section of the base, but he drops in a blip on the top side. Interesting approach. We'll use a super wizard blimp there to go take out the mon or take out the uh, scatter shot and the expo. Um, damage backwards into that wizard tower as well as they attack the walls. That's as far as they're going. They get the rage tower to trigger, and now he can push the heroes into that area, or he could have the heroes 
Or on the top side, just avoid that area. Still needs to get... I guess... I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised that he decided to run it on this side. So one problem that I foresee here is... Here, zoom it all the way out here. You have the defensive queen and the defensive royal champion still standing. And if the heroes are going to go in on the top side, rather than the left side, since it's a symmetrical base, they had a choice, he could have got the defensive royal champion out of the way nice and early, and so he didn't have to deal with both the royal champion and the queen later on and save some headhunters. But we'll see how he handles it. We'll see how he handles it. Queen goes in, she'll fight off the defensive ice golems. As King under Phoenix right now, taking the model of fire, but that's perfectly okay. The Phoenix will pick it up after that. The Queen, with her building intact there, will now have some wiggle room in that area. But the multi-part of the middle base there needs to go down. The World Champion is stuck in the Tornado Trap. She is able to find the final strike there. Pops her ability. That ability will hit one of the sweepers and stop the balloons from getting knocked back as they make their way over there. But the Queen, she needs to get the other sweeper and she needs to get the models out of the way. She pops her ability. Diggy's right there with her. Diggy will get this done as she comes out of her cloak. But he doesn't have enough to finish off the rest of the base. It's a defense. But it's one that ATS Clashers desperately needs. Mavil will send in our next one with a Electro Dragon attack. Starting with a couple of balloons up top there. Then in Rocket Balloons. The Rocket Balloons will get the one shot onto the air defenses. And he will push in these Electro Dragons coming in behind the sweepers. Just two Electro Dragons coming in all on their lonesome to try to secure the town hall. The chain off of the king would be really powerful right now. Taking down a lot of the things right there, but the single furnace locks on. But off on that. Gets another shot off, puts in a couple of balloons, and he will catch the town hall on the crash damage. And the other Electro Dragon escapes with full HP. And that will direct where he wants the next phase of the attack to come in. He'll send in the heroes at the bottom. He'll put in the E-Drags over on the right side. And we'll see if that E-Drag has any impact later on. But it's going to get that Arch Tower down without any problem. And he'll start to work backwards from everybody else. He got the Sweepers down as well as he worked his way past the Town Hall. So that really, really helped him out here. Clean Electro Dragon attack so far. Engage the defensive queen. Order building wears off. Locks onto her. Does he use any spells right there? Needs some spells. Get that queen down. Lost two E-Drags to her. Warden working on her, but gives up. The king steps in. He will finally take her down. Lost a lot of E-Drags. All that was going on. Well, has the defensive CC that I believe is still in there and could present some problems to the backside. The world champion makes her way in. His goblins and ice golems. Get the scatter shot down. Maybe he can get through the ice golems. Lock back onto it. Lock back onto it. Get it, get it. Diggy gets the stun. Got it. Okay, okay. All right. Power through those ice golems. Queen's beating through the wall. Patience. Patience. Eagle gonna survive. Bean will step through. She'll lock onto it. Last ice golem has gone off. Or champion, hurry up and duck, and dodges the strikes! That was huge right there. Pop stars the ability. One shots to single for no range up to RC. Frees up the expo. Come on, RC. Move it, move it, move it. Baby Dragon to the side there. Expo's gonna pick back up. Go invisible, go invisible. There we go. Baby Dragon steps through. Tags out the expo. And he's got it. Are you kidding me? ADS clashes just like that. With a percentage advantage going into this exchange, are back in this war. Do not count them out just yet. A triple for Pavo. So they catch a defense here. Triple again. It will be ahead. Yada will try to keep it out of reach here for ATS Clashers, but they're hot on their tail now. Overcome their one star. Back within reach. And there is a very real possibility that they could end up pulling into the lead against the team that just felled Navi in the round before. And down south, he sends in a couple rocket balloons. Gets the cannon down there, sends in one extra balloon to go after the archer tower and takes it on the crash damage. Establishing his funnel. Wall break in. 
and he'll get ready for the Electro Titan to charge in. He wall breaks again with a freeze. I don't know that that was necessary, but you know what? The troops would not have actually gone into the base if he didn't get the wall break down early. So very interesting play to wall break a wall that should not have been able to be wall broken. Flameflinger continues across the top of the base, making his way towards the Eagle Artillery. But Eagle Artillery strikes will start to rain down, and the Electric Titans will march their way through the core. And Paul still stands. Gonna have to sideswipe it here, but the King pops it, building to the right side, and will keep that single for distract with all of his barbarians. He's got witches there as well, but the bomb tower is quickly clearing up his barbarians, and he does get targeted. Everybody else marching through. Electric Titans step into the town hall. The Queen takes the monolith. Get that Eagle Artillery down soon. Queen's working on the Town Hall. King goes to Phoenix, trying to get his way through that single, but a lot of Electro Titans are taking the healers and are moving off towards that single, leaving the Queen a little bit stranded in the middle of the base there. She'll engage the defensive pro champion shortly. She needs to pop her ability. She will. Perfect. Perfect timing. Queen's in a circle back to the left. The scanner shot's still going to fire down on her, but because the defensive row champion is out of the way, his row champion can start to sweep out the right side. She starts at the bottom and will have the diggy to get the stuns, but she has a long way to go and the pathing is not super thin, so she will be taking damage from multiple defenses at the same time. That could prove to be a challenge. She needs to pop her ability to remove these outside archer towers. Patience, patience, wait for the cannon, and get ready, pop it. That'll clear out and push him towards the scatter shot. Very, very nice, that gives him a chance. But it's not gonna be easy here he's got very low hp the yetis are taking the expo rc gonna get the scatter shot yeti's still controlling but now they turn on her very close here rc get the stun no oh my god ladies and gentlemen ats has their opportunity a lot of pressure now if they triple they overcome the one star more electro dragons but they've used them in a variety of different ways. This one going to be using lots of invisibility and a clone, which leads me to believe it is going to be either a super minion bomb or a super archer bomb. Small funnel formed out. No heroes used initially. Ice Hound leads the charge into the air defense, minimizing how many spells he needs. So we can have more and more to go in with this blimp. He can pop the warden. He needs the rage as soon as he pops it. And so we can maximize the Electro Dragon surging forward, the blue surging forward, trying to get as many tra traps cleared as possible. Blimp sails in, frees up the sweeper, lands by the town hall. And now what's inside? Looks like it was ground troops. I see ice globes coming out. Super wizards, super archers, a mix of both. Clone them up and nuke out that area. Electro Dragon stays safe on both sides. Big packs. Surviving up top and down bottom. He needs to secure the town takedown. Was able to grab it. Rice Golems sitting underneath him. We're popping as he strikes out of that invisibility, but he got all of his primary targets. And he got the CC completely out of the way. Now he can send in his heroes. They're gonna work backwards. And they'll meet the remainder of the Electric Dragons at the very end, but there may not be any to receive them. Warden gets shot down. Electro Dragons got the chains through the, the storage into the air defense down at the bottom there. And they will get some chains into the Teslas and at least soften up the backside at a bare minimum. Al still working. He drags getting a few shots there. If they get some more Teslas down, that would be really, really helpful for the back end. King and Queen will engage the defensive world champion. Then he puts in his own world champion. Very, very good so far. Queen will help get the defensive king down or is she just standing there Letting, just watching him take strikes. But the world champion cuts across. She's going to go to the multi inferno. Queen takes out the storage. RC ability still intact there. If you can get the RC ability to hit the defensive warden, he's in a very, very strong spot. It does hit the warden. She will tag out that damage and make the hardest hitting defense look at the base there. Go down a little bit smoother. Queen has her ability. The king goes down. She's on her own now. Warden can't reach her just yet, but with her ability and the baby dragon and the feast cleared up the top of the base there, she should be good and. Grand Skelly's coming her way. King still stands. Grand Skelly stalled her up at a very bad time. Pops the Queen ability. Pull through. Everybody pushed. Three buildings to go. This is for the lead. Get in there. Don't get locked out of the King. And he's got it. ATS 
Slashers overcomes the three-star deficit, and they are back in this war. If they can get another defense here, they will have percentage advantage. Now the pressure is on. Chaz Mackier must triple now to maintain their lead. Anything less will not suffice. He has seven lightning, no earthquake, which means he's going for the defensive queen. Go after the Inferno. Go after... Oh, that's a rough start. Misses the queen, wastes the spell, and leaves up a critical part of that base. We'll see if she causes any problems here. She's bound to cause problems. You know she always does. That was a big investment. And a slight miss on that lightning. But you gotta remember that the hero hitboxes are significantly smaller. You gotta hit them dead center to have a guaranteed chance to get them through. Like they have to be covered very significantly more than you would have to cover a defense because a defense's footprint reaches wide while the hero's footprint is not a circle around them. It is a point. It is a direct point in the middle of their model. So King's gonna make his way as far as he can, but he does end up not getting her down. Misses the scatter shot as well. Down south, the log launcher will push into the other multi-inferno and engage the defensive world champion, but his queen still can get in there with her ability. Her ability should, could claim both of those defensive heroes and put him right back into action here. Yetis lead the charge, but the queen still stalled up on defensive ice golems. She's gonna take a moment to get in there. Our champion down south pops her ability, stays away from the defensive queen. Yeti might go into the core of the base here. Here comes the Ice Hound with the balloons. Our champion's gonna get tagged out by the monolith though, but the queen goes to ability, takes the defensive queen down, and now has a huge amount of archers that will give her protection as she makes her way into the monolith, and she will get it down. Guys, he's got it recovered here. Into the town hall we go. We'll end under a scatter shot. He's got 10 balloons still on standby. He will separate the balloons into multiple stacks. There's three different stacks as they make their way into the scatter shot. And at least one of those stacks will get inside of the minimum range. And there it is. It's a triple. Lavi will not secede that lead over to ATS Clashers. And to top that off, He's going to put down a couple of swag freezes and really show what Chazmac EA is made of. This whole war is going to come down to the final, final attacks. If ATS Clashers wins this exchange with a triple and a defense, they will claim victory. But Chazmac EA gets to see what they do before they have to react. The Rue will try to save the war for ATS Clashers. This grand finals comes down to these last two attackers. The roof on one side, equal on the other. And you gotta remember, the equal watch the war against Navi in the round before this. So if this triples, as Mackie still has a very, very solid chance with an attacker like that as their closer. But he's gonna be using the lightning. Look out the scatter shot and the expo. And he will go ahead and have this warden tank the mortar while he sends in the hog rider to go search for traps. And once that mortar is out of the way, he can pull the warden off to the right and he can begin his march towards the town hall with the remainder of the army. Maybe drag another line. Here we go. Moment of truth. Queen will get the ice golem to go out in front of her. Has the funnel very, very securely established here. The storage is a little bit of a worry, but I think it'll be okay. See a wizard to follow in behind to go get the storage out of the way very soon, if possible. But nobody's following over there to it, so it's not going to cause a problem. Everybody goes north. He gets a whole bunch of traps there, pulled with the blues to search ahead. Still has a ward ability active. Was able to wall break through into the town hall compartment. Still has an invisibility tower. May want to freeze. Want to freeze on the approach there. Not freezing yet. Not freezing yet. The defensive freezes are going off from the ice. Goal. He now freezes. Rages up. Electro Titan steps through. 
Take the town hall, take the town hall. Don't let that invisible tower go off. Okay, he gets it. But he immediately pulls the healers into danger. They're sitting in the poison. And they're going to be taking a beating there. There's nothing you can do to stop that damage now. Loses the ward to the model. The model doing so much work here. Queen's right there. Pops the queen ability. Tries to get the model down. The troops there did survive, but all the healers went down. The artillery was taken down, down south there by the flame flinger, but it's about to get targeted. Now it would be a time for the world champion to go in at the bottom side and support the flame flinger to try to get it to survive and give him the support into the back end. Or you put it up in the left and try to force everybody back into the base there to get the support. I don't know what's the what's the play? What's the play here? Think fast. Think smart. Rogue Champion. Oh, I see her. I see her. Rogue Champion is already deployed up top. She already used her ability, but the jump carries him through. Need to get to the outside of the base. The witch is on the outside. Well, or at least her skeletons are. She is not. It's a bit of a problem here. She may turn back when that collector goes down. 17 seconds. Move it, move it, move it. Rogue Champion sweeping through. Yetis and Electro Titan. Sneaky Cop is down south. Everything's tank except for the cannon. Move through! He's got the king going back to the middle of the base there. Electric Titan's right there. He does not have the time! Oh, it's a heartbreaker! 95% equal defends, and now his last attack just got a whole lot easier. He can now strike back against the roof, and he will only need a two star to lock in the championship and ATS clashes you gotta hand it to him what a rally at the end there what a rally to finish off this grand finals match they did not give up they fought to the very end he came so incredibly close here but now equal can come in with an easy attack and here we go a two star here ends the itsu cup and crowns Chaz Mac EA as the victor. Gardening with a baby dragon in from the left side, just claiming out an exterior archer tower. Gonna reach in there, maybe get that mortar out of the way. That'd be a nice extra pickup. Not quite, not quite, that's fine. That wasn't the target. Just wanted the archer tower down, a little bit of trash. King and the queen will make her way towards the town hall. As soon as that town hall goes down, and they can take a sigh of relief here and sit back and relax and see if these balloons can coast their way through the base. Can't believe ATS had so many time fails. You got, you guys, you gotta, you gotta give credit where credit is due. They had two time fails and the one star. If any of those results were just very slightly different, we would have a completely different amount of pressure here for equal, but he does freeze up the town hall. Able to lock directly onto it. Gonna miss that multi. Goes invisible with the queen, trying to sustain her for a little bit. She'll go back to the multi inferno in just a moment and continuing to use invisibility, but the poison is claiming her inside of that invisibility and he will lead that multi up and that'll be a little bit of a problem here, but let's see if he can overcome it. And uh, man, it makes it wonder if that last attack didn't time fail or their other attack didn't time fail, then this would have had to bend the plan that had to triple to get Chazmac EA the championship. So right now it's off to a good start. Well, let's see where fate would have led us in a very slightly different result. The Rage Tower's active. Sweeper's not gonna back a bit. Inferno's doing some heavy damage here. A struggle to get into these sweepers, but the Slammer finally is getting strikes onto that multi inferno. The RC ability sweeps out both of the sweepers. The defensive queen still stands, and all the lava pups are right there. Hopefully, he has a dragon or, or something inside of that soul slammer that can deal with that. It's a dragon rider, that's not going to do the trick. I'm let Al to go clean this up there. Dragon Rider hits a black air bomb. Balloons surge forward. Warden will carry him into the monolith right there. But as Warden gets hit and the Warden goes down. And oh man. Can you believe this? This war would have swung with this miss if ATS Clashers was able to convert either their one star into a two star or either of their time fails into a triple but that settles our championship and ladies and gentlemen Chaz Mac EA after a deadly deadly 
push through the playoffs bracket here. Had to go through. Knight Rider, Chazmac GS, Navi, and ATS Clashers. But in the end, they will win the Itsu Cup and they are crowned our champions.